It's hard to breathe a woman. Hers is the ultimate rags-to-riches story, from poor girl Virginia Pugh, who hopes to maybe become a hairdresser, to country music superstar Tammy Wynette. I had a great childhood, but I thought it was horrible at the time. I was born and raised on a farm in Mississippi. I baled hay, pulled corn, uh, did about everything to do on a farm. It was a great childhood, it was very simple. I wish my children could, could see more of the way that I was raised. But they never will, but uh, I wish they could. The respected lady of country music credits her father, a local musician who died when she was just eight months old, with first introducing her to song. One of the last things that uh, he talked about before he died, so my mother says, was that if I was interested in music in any way, to please make sure and see that I had piano lessons and whatever, you know. And he would sit and hold me when he was blind before he died at the piano and place my fingers on the keys and laugh and, and you know, he loved music very much. And it really inspired me when I first came to Nashville and everybody was saying, no, 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 you know, we don't want you. And I was getting turned down repeatedly. In the back of my mind, I kept thinking, but if, if my father were alive, he would say, you know, go on, try. Bored and restless at 17, she graduated from high school and promptly married her sweetheart, Eupel Bird. I thought there had to be a better way of life somewhere. I just was running away from home, and I thought that by getting married was the thing to do, and uh, to have children and uh, be married and have a family was, was the thing to do, you know. Now, happily married to husband number five, record producer George Ritchie, she recalls that back in 1959, times could be tough for a teenage bride and mother. I lived in a log house. I had no refrigerator, no stove. I had no indoor plumbing, no water. There's an awful lot of things that reminds me of, of, of the lean years to tell me that there definitely was lean years. Today, she has a complete beauty salon in her Nashville home and keeps a personal hairdresser on call around the clock. It's a long way from the day she was broke and so desperate to learn a trade, she enrolled in beauty school to study hairdressing. Even that turned into a headache for hard luck Winnette. I would drive 35 miles each way every day and take my two children with me and put them in nursery school in Tupelo and then come back to Red Bay every afternoon, like 70 miles a day. And it was really hard. I didn't have any, any uh, money to... Uh, uh, to pay someone, you know, to stay and, and take care of my children. My mother at the time wasn't able to do it for me. She was still working and working in the fields and in, a, in the factories, too. Tammy and her husband can laugh about the hard times now, but it was no fun giving perms and pedicures by day and being turned down at every audition by night. Then, out of the blue, a record company boss heard her voice and said yes. Billy changed everything for me. He was uh, almost like a, a Santa Claus to me, you know, when I first came to Nashville. Because I had been turned down so many times, it, it was strange to hear the word, well, yes, you know, we will sign you. Just follow the Apartment number nine was Tammy's first hit single. Overnight, she went from a hairdresser named Virginia to country star Tammy Wynette. That came from Billy Sherrill. He asked me what my name was, and I told him, and uh, he said, well, what name would you like to use? And I said, it doesn't matter to me. And he said, well, did you ever see the movie Tammy? He said, you look like a Tammy to me, because I had long hair at the time and wore it in a ponytail. We're going home. Tammy went on to record hit after hit, but it was marriage number four to country star George Jones in 1969 and record-breaking tours as a Mr. and Mrs. Double Act that elevated Tammy to legendary superstar status. He had always been my idol. He had always been my he one of my heroes. And meeting him, I, I couldn't believe I had met him at all, period. You know, it just didn't seem like... I could be meeting someone like George Jones, and I hear people say that today, and it, it's still the same, you know, because he is, he's the greatest when it comes to country singers. Tammy divorced Jones in 1975 after his hard-living ways had entered country folklore. 
solo once more, she rocketed from one success to the next, chart-busting hits and sell-out concerts. But the queen of country says that to friends and fans, she's still the same old down-home gal. I haven't changed from the, the person, the family person that I was. Uh, I still love my family, and I, I still love my friends. I still want to be around them. I just don't have the time that I, that I did, you know, before. But they're very proud of me, and I'm, I'm proud that they are.